Okay, next segment, I got to clean this up. Now, if I want to bevel this, I have to leave it thick in the middle. So I might just do that. I said in the previous video that I was going to thin it down, but I just remembered that if I need to do beveling, it needs to remain thick. Okay. So let's see. Let me just get it taken down to a more regular surface. Now this is 3 8 inch steel. I was using 5 8 inch aluminum earlier. They look similar, but this one is steel, this one is aluminum. Okay. And this is plastic. The mallet is plastic. Okay, so I'm just going to tap around the edges, getting it uh, more regular. You'll see. It'll be it'll be less lumpy, less zigzaggy when when I'm done. And then I'll say, "See, this is what it means to look more regular." Now, there's a slight danger of installing cracks at this stage. You know, you don't want to, I don't want to install cracks on the edge because once there's a crack going, it can expand and go all the way across. If you hit, you know, the ends or if you apply a lot of force anywhere. And I found out after careful studying on one of my videos that sometimes these cracks are installed not because there's too much force inward, it's because the biface is tilted too much to one side or the other. So instead of scooping out like this, it scoops out at an angle like that. And it looks like a radial crack, but it's actually part of a scoop out that has escaped off the bottom and, and worked its way into the top. Instead of scooping out only the bottom, if I have it twisted or tilted, It'll start to scoop, but then the edge will will sneak up onto the surface on this side. And it'll look like a radial crack, but it's not. It's a skewed scoop. How's that for a split nappy term? <laughs> All right, so this is the tedious part. I'm just going to go and clean it up uh, and, you know, grind and chip and grind and chip and grind and chip. Little chips, nothing major. Just making it look neater. I'm trying not to take too much off the sides, but uh, we'll see. See, I was looking at what points in Texas have beveling, and I don't think there's many that have barbs and beveling. Most of the beveling occurs on points that don't have barbs. So I'm leaving it wide so I can install barbs, but I might not actually need to leave it wide because I don't know if there's any points that are commonly barbed and beveled in this area. Well, I can always do it anyway. Yeah. No one says I can't do the the barbs and the bevels on the same point.
So the tip is rather wonky, yes, because I left it for last. So I'll be working on this tip for a little while. I might zone out just so I don't break it because the tips usually give me trouble because I don't know how to work them that well. I tend to use less energy than I need because I don't want to snap the tip off. But then I run, in, I run into problems with stiff fractures like that on this side. But I think I'd rather have a stiff fracture than a broken tip. Stiff fractures like that too. Because I'm using less than... Less than optimal force. I'm backing off a little bit. Now see, this is a crunchy area where there's concrete. And I said earlier that by reducing the tip here, I can probably get past some of that concrete, but I'm not so sure now. I might have to deal with trying to sharpen up that concrete and encountering little crunchy areas like this. And again, if I want to bevel it, I can't thin it down too much. It's got to remain thick so that you can see the bevels. Of course, they didn't make them that way in the past. They didn't make it so that you could you know see the bevels they they just made the point and then the bevels are incidental because that's the way they resharpened it uh, I'm focusing on make maintaining the thickness because I want to make it look like it started out pretty wide and then they beveled it to resharpen it if it's really wide it's going to be thick in the middle just because of the width the thickness ratio thing uh, but I started out with a small, relatively small piece. So I had to make it look like I started with a big piece. And the way to do that is to keep it thick so that when I do put the bevels in, it looks like it started out as a thick, big piece. All right. But it's got to be a little bit flatter than that. It's just it's too high right there as far as the thickness goes. It's, it's too thick right here on the top. Okay. Yeah. Just a few of those and I should be good. People keep asking me about grits. What's the grit on these uh, abraders? And I just told him, the last guy that asked me, I just told him, I don't know. I just, whatever's on the shelf at Harbor Freight or Lowe's, that's all I get. They only usually have one choice. And I don't, I don't know the grit. So I just pick it up and use it. Whatever's on the shelf. Ooh, that almost got that. Dang it. Let's see. If I cheat by hitting on it, sometimes it doesn't look right, but I think that was okay. So you can hit on that step fracture and sometimes it'll clear it off, but this time it didn't do that great a job. Yeah, it's almost getting too thin.
steel does not mess around. Look at that. Voila. Okay, that's about as thin as I want to go if I want to uh, maintain the thickness for some good looking bevels. Yeah. What is the th width to thickness ratio? Millimeters 50 by, let's see, that's about 11 or 12, 4 to 1, 5 to 1, something like that. Yeah. No, nothing more than 5 to 1. Okay, can I get that one remaining spot right there? Maybe. Ooh, that almost reached. Why do I want to come in from that side? Because this side is more concrete -y than that side. Almost got it to go. Let's see, let's try this one over here. See, this side starts out good, but then it immediately goes into some concrete. So I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. You did it. Mm -hmm. Still a little bit of a step fracture right there. Oh well. Okay, so the blade looks okay except for one spot.
keeping it thick is throwing me off a little bit. So one of the secrets of getting nice beveling is to make sure the surfaces are smooth and not all wonky and lumpy. Now this is a little bit wonky and lumpy so the beveling will look better in some areas than in other areas. Yeah. All right. Better clean that off now before it starts to interfere with the flaking later on. It's going to interfere with the flaking later on if I don't get rid of that right now. Okay. Let's see. Okay. All right. Come on. Yeah. Sharpening through that concrete is not going to be all that great, but oh well.
I saw a point recently in the Overstreet guy that's a San something, San Gabriel or San, I don't know. Anyway, it has deep notches and it has this general shape. And I don't know if it has beveling on it, but I'm going to put beveling in it. All this time for setting it up for some beveling and it might not even look that great. Because it's hard to get a smooth surface on this stuff. So I'm having to take bold flakes in order to get past the concrete stuff. And when you take bold flakes off, you get dips. So a lot of little flakes going across. A lot of little flakes going across makes it nice and smooth and, and consistent. So when, when you put the bevel in, it looks consistent. So when you have uh, dips and ridges and dips and ridges, the beveling is also going to look like it has dips and ridges in it. Okay. So this is the end of the preform stage. Now we're getting into the final finishing. Okay. So I gotta get my pressure flaker out and probably the notchomatic just to blow through some of these thicker areas. Where is it? I just had a bunch of room. There we go. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's see how these notches go. Uh, let me think. Yeah, expanding stem. It's got some pretty good barbs on it. I don't remember the name of it. I just remember the picture. In the Overstreet Guide, it's not in the the, the Red Texas book. This is one good use. Uh, a friend of mine might donate a iPad to me, and I'm thinking of some uses for it. I just thought of one. If I can get it hooked up to the internet, what I can do is, if I can't remember the name of a point style, I can just look it up on a pad or something while I'm filming. Uh, because I save pictures of stuff that I can't remember the names of. So I can be looking through my photos on a different device and find it by just by the photo. That's one, one way I can use that. I have a tablet that I can do that with also, but the tablet's so delicate, I don't want to have it around the stones and drop it on, on, onto something and break it. Always excuses, I know. Yeah, it's not San Gabriel because it doesn't have barbs or notches, right? Correct. Okay. Hmm. 
Mm. Ah, okay. Hmm. It's already uh, Red River Knife. Red River Knife. That's between Texas and Oklahoma, I think. Yeah, Red River Knife has bevels on it. But it's uh, just very simple stem. <laughs> I think I can get it thinned down the rest of the way by uh, by doing the notching. Okay, so that's it's already thirty minutes, so we're going to cut it there and continue on the next segment. All right.